teachers, in this video, I am going to show you how to make your Genially presentations more accessible for all of your students. So a big problem that I've had when I'm creating interactive presentations that students are going to access remotely is a lot of the programs and softwares that are out there that allow you to create interactive presentations they make it really difficult to add audio to the presentation or narration. Some won't allow you to add audio at all, and then you have others that make it really complicated where you have to download an extension and then record the narration or audio in another platform and then embed it in the presentation, and it's so complicated. But one of the things that I love about Genially is compared to a lot of the other interactive presentation programs that I've used, this is definitely one of the easiest for adding narration and audio, which is so important because being able to add that audio makes sure that our presentations are accessible for all of our students. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer. I'm gonna show you some different ways to integrate audio and narration into your Genially presentations. Okay, so I am back inside of Genially working on a presentation that I've been working on for a while and the presentation is pretty much finished, but now I just wanna add sound to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different options you have for adding sound to a Genially presentation. Now your first option is to click on this button that says add background audio. And when you click on that, you need to have a file already saved on your computer that you're going to attach there. So you'll just click this box and upload the file from your computer. Now, important thing to know, if you add background audio, so anything that you add by clicking this button up here that counts as background audio, that is going to play over top of your whole entire presentation. So this is great for if you want music playing quietly in the background the entire time, this background audio can play the entire time throughout a presentation. So let's say you have uh, a presentation where you're teaching students about the 1920s. Maybe you want music from the 1920s just quietly playing in the background the entire time and that is how you now, an important part of making our presentations accessible is being able to add narration to them. So let's go down. I don't have a lot of text in this presentation, but let's say on this question slide here, I wanted to actually read the text to the students so that it's accessible for all of the students. Um, a lot of times when I'm creating these genially presentations for my ESL students, I add narration to every single slide. And the thing that I like about Genially is it makes it so easy for me to add the narration. A lot of times if I'm working in other programs that allow you to create interactive presentations, I either have to add an extension to the presentation or I have to record in another platform and then upload to the presentation. There's never like an easy way to do it, but Genially there is an easy way to do it. So if I wanted to add narration to this slide, all I would do was click insert, and then I want to click on audio, and then all I'm going to do is click to record, and I already have a microphone hooked up to this presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and record audio for this very quickly. Where is Egypt located? Okay, now after you record the audio for a specific slide, it will appear right there on the slide. And I want you to see some of the different options. Now, if you have a paid account, you can change the name of the audio file. Uh, a lot of times I don't actually do this. The only time I do this is if I have multiple audio segments on one slide, then I might change the name of the file just so it's obvious the order that students should click on. So number one, number two, etc. Now, I usually turn on the autoplay feature and what that means is as soon as the students get to this slide, this will automatically start playing. So they don't have to hit the play button for it to start playing. It will just start doing this. 
loop I don't use very often, but the loop feature essentially means that as soon as the audio stops playing, it will start playing again and it will just keep looping or playing continuously. Hide Audio Player is one that I use a lot. And basically what that means is students won't actually see this on the screen. So if I have this turned on, they won't actually see this box on the screen. If I have it turned off, they will see this box on the screen. Now, keep in mind that if you have the audio player turned on, or if you have the audio player hidden, you also need to have autoplay turned on because if you don't have autoplay turned on and they can't see the box, they can't push play. So the only way they'll be able to hear it is if autoplay is on. Now, background audio is just going to be that continuous audio that I've already talked about. And then down here, this is really cool. You can actually trim the beginning or the end of the audio on each slide. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. If I click preview up here, it will preview the slide. Where is Egypt located? Now you can see it automatically played because I had autoplay turned on as soon as the slide came up, but because I have the audio player hidden, you don't actually see that it's here. Now, anytime you wanna pull those settings up and change it, just click on the audio player and then click this icon with the three lines and this will come up and you can change it anytime. Now, one other thing I wanna show you with the audio that's really cool is let's say you record a narration or you record some kind of sound effect and that is going to come up again in multiple slides. So let's just pretend I had the same question on this slide. I know I don't, but let's just pretend we do. If I click on that slide and then I go back to insert, that audio file is still here. So if I just click on it, it will add it to this slide too. And I can add this audio file to as many slides as I want. But as you can see, adding audio to Genially is super, super easy. So I strongly recommend that you take advantage of this feature. So some of these audio tips that I've shared with you today are things, little tips and tricks that I've kind of learned the more that I've used Genially and I've experimented with Genially. And I'd love to hear from you as you've been working in this program have you discovered any little tips or tricks that you find to be really helpful or to make your presentations even more interactive for students? If you found anything really cool like that inside of Genially, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know. And then make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I've got another Genially video coming out soon where I'm gonna show you how to add uh, drag and drops and drawing features into your Genially presentations, and I definitely want you to know about that video as soon as it's available, and you will find out about it straight away if you are subscribed to this channel. So make sure you do that, and until next time, happy teaching!